Hey, it's Andrew Huang. I love synthesizers. I'm not sure if you could tell. So it's always exciting when something new comes out, especially from a company as iconic as Moog, and they have just dropped Mavis. So thank you to Moog for giving me early access, and they are sponsoring this video, but as usual, they're not telling me anything I have to say or do. So Mavis is like a single Moog synth voice in a small form factor. It comes as a kit that you build yourself. Uh, it's really easy, it takes like 10 or 15 minutes, and you can keep it in this enclosure that it comes with, or it can also be mounted as a Eurorack module. Let's check out what it has to offer. So Mavis has the classic Moog subtractive synth architecture. You've got an oscillator going into a filter, going into an amplifier. And then for modulation, you've got a low frequency oscillator and an envelope generator. You can get a lot of classic sounds using just those building blocks, but there are a few other things here. Um, so first of all, as you can see, there's all these patch points. So it is a semi-modular synth. You can self-patch it. You can integrate it with other modular stuff. There's a few utilities, like you've got a mult for uh, generating a copy of a signal an attenuator, so there's the input and the output, and uh, you set the level here. There's a two-channel mixer for audio or control voltage, and since it's analog, this stuff all responds to audio rate modulation, so we could really crank this LFO. This would be very fun to frequency modulate from another synth. Oops, I made bubbles. Now you've also got a sample and hold here. This is a first, I believe, for any Moog module, although some of their synths like the Matriarch do have a sample and hold. And then you have a wave folder, and this is the first for any Moog instrument. Attach the VCO to the fold input. Actually, you can hear the most pronounced effect of the wave folder if you feed it the LFO going at audio rate, because the LFO has a triangle wave, which is one of the most simple waveforms. So a wave folder is a way to add more harmonics to a sound which makes it uh, brighter and more aggressive. And what it's doing basically is when a wave gets pushed up to the limit, um, normally we get distortion, we get clipping. What a wave folder does is when you hit that ceiling, it starts inverting the signal. So the wave gets folded back and that creates a more complex waveform and more complex waveforms have more harmonics. I've got a very in-depth but fun video on the harmonic series if that's an area where you want to brush up your knowledge. I feel like a a lot of people, myself included, will not be able to help comparing Mavis to the Mother 32, uh, Moog's other kind of Eurorack format single voice synth offering. The Coles Notes version is, it's like a Mother 32 without a sequencer, but of course it is more nuanced than that. There are things that each of them has that the other doesn't, and uh, I'll do a full segment later in this video comparing the two. <laughs> Now, I always like to demonstrate instruments in the context of actually making music with them. So I was thinking what I would do is go through a handful of my works in progress and add some Mavis on top. First one I pulled up is this kind of chill beat. And I've dialed in this sort of flute-ish sound. I also wanted to try Mavis through some effects. So I've got a synesthesia here, adding a bit of chorus -y vibrato. And then this Empress Reverb, doing a combo of delay and reverb. So I'm gonna record a couple of these little ARP stabs in different octaves and uh, just add that as a component to this track. I've got another project pulled up now where I actually think I could use a similar sound, uh, but this time I'm gonna apply effects in Ableton because I think um, this one sound will have uh, a couple of different ways that it can be used in different sections of this song. But it's gonna take a little more automation finesse to get it there.
All right, I got another track here that needs a bass line, and uh, as we all know, Moogs are great on bass. Let's dial in a sound. <laughs> Okay, got something here that needs uh, another ARP, but this time a more plucky, sparkly one. Let's dial it in. Let's find some effects for it. Yeah, that's nice. Little octave reverb thing there. More reverb. Yeah, this is like just the sound I wanted. Uh, let's hear it in context of this track. <laughs> <laughs> let's try a couple. Cool. Just for context, this is a collab with Bad Snacks that uh, we started a long time ago, needs to come out. But I did want to explain that I was just temporarily in LA and renting an Airbnb, which is why I did not have a mic stand. By the way, what I'm doing right now is an approach I sometimes take where I really go in on one instrument and add it to a bunch of different projects. Most of the time I find it's more productive to go hard on one project and really try and take it to the finish line. And um, that's something I do a lot in my online course where um, students are spending one to two hours a day for 10 days straight just on one project. Usually that is the best way to actually get things finished. However, this is an alternate approach that's good sometimes where um, you, know, you really zone out on one instrument you kind of like get into it get the feel for it and then you can kind of get broad productivity rather than deep productivity uh, if you keep your projects organized enough and something that I try to do is tag all of my projects like right in the file names with uh, what they still need and then I can go in and do a session where it's just like all synths or all bass guitar and just add that element to a whole bunch of tracks that need it just a little workflow idea for you let's try some other Mavis stuff so, uh, it's just a single voice. It's not meant to be played alone. So I've racked it up with some other fun stuff. And uh, also, Moog also sent me their MSS, the Moog. Can you see me right now? The Moog Sound Studio, very fun package. Comes with a lot of colorful stuff, as well as, uh, of course, uh, the Mother 32 subharmonicon and drummer from another mother. I'm also really pumped to try this out. You draw these cards and you put them together and they give you fun patch ideas kind of at random. I don't think I'm gonna use these today because they are made for these three modules and we're also gonna be patching. We're also gonna be patching with all these. So, uh...
So if you're interested, I'll break down the main parts of that patch. Mavis is playing the lead part and it's being sequenced from ground control. Uh, actually, everything in this patch is being sequenced from ground control. But uh, the lead part is interesting because I have a 32 step melody that I just played in pretty randomly, just goofing around on a minor scale until I had something that I kind of liked. But then I have another sequence coming from another track on ground control that I chose a step length of 55 for. And it's uh, mostly playing two different octaves as well as an occasional fourth and a fifth and I'm combining that with the first sequence so essentially it's transposing that original sequence by octaves and the occasional fourth and fifth in an irregular pattern well it's a regular pattern of 55 steps but it's uh, an irregular length I don't know how many times 32 and 55 need to phase against each other to line up again but um, yeah then on top of that I have probability set so that around 30% of the notes are randomly skipped so um, it would be really really rare for it to ever repeat itself. But because that original sequence is 32 steps, it's locked into our 4-4 time signature, so you do catch these repeated kind of shapes of melodies, and I think that helps it stay grounded. It's familiar with variation rather than just complete random notes all the time. I also tried to get Mavis to sound really alive and dynamic by patching the noise source from the Mother 32 into the sample and hold input and taking that out uh, attenuated to control the filter cutoff. And the sample and hold is triggered with every melody note. So that means every note we get a slight variation in the brightness of the sound. And then on top of that, I was playing the filter and the amp envelope live. So uh, more variations on the brightness of the sound and also changing the length and sustain of the notes, uh, creating a lot more expression. And then the melody is going through Dismodus Versio for a nice reverb. The chords are coming from the subharmonicon. They also have a bit of random skipping in how often they're triggered so they don't play in a regular rhythm. And then uh, they're being run through the Milky Way for a different kind of reverb. The drums are all DFAM other than a sampled snare that's playing from uh, the Two of Cups sampler. You can actually see it's triggering two samples here. There was a kick drum as well, but I removed it from the multi-track because the DFAM was just doing such a good job already for a kick. So all of those elements were a one take live performance that I recorded into Ableton. And then uh, after that, I added in the Matriarch playing a bass line. So now let's do the comparison to the Mother 32, which is Moog's other single voice semi-modular synthesizer. Uh, Mavis is almost exactly three quarters its size. It's a 44 HP compared to 60 HP. Mavis uses these smaller knobs that are a little more fiddly and Mavis, of course, does not have a sequencer. That's probably the biggest difference. There are a number of other things that the Mother 32 has that Mavis does not have. Most notably, it's got voltage control over the filter resonance. It's got a dedicated FM input for the VCO. So on Mavis, if you wanted to do FM, you'd have to combine your pitch signal with your FM signal before sending it to Mavis's pitch input. The Mother 32 also has a noise source. Its filter has a high pass option. It's got a MIDI input and it's got an assignable output that can be configured to do a bunch of different things. And it's got two outputs for the VCO. You can get the saw wave and the pulse wave at the same time. And it's also got two outputs for the LFO. You can get the triangle wave and the pulse wave of the LFO at the same time. Now, Mavis Mavis, though, also has a bunch of things that the Mother 32 does not have. It's got a sample and hold circuit. It's got that wonderful wave folder. There's this interesting keyboard scaling knob. So if you have it all the way counterclockwise, then um, your notes are just equal temperament. But then as you turn it up, it spreads the notes apart. So kind of an interesting way to get experimental and you could come up with some scales that nobody's ever used before. And then surprisingly, Mavis has a way better envelope than the Mother 32. On the Mother 32, you have an attack, sustain, release envelope. It's labeled decay, but it behaves more like a release. And the sustain only has one level and you can either turn it off, so it just goes from the attack stage right to the decay stage, or you can turn it on. On Mavis, you've got a full standard ADSR envelope, so that just gives you some more flexibility with your shaping. And I haven't got the confirmed price on Mavis yet, but I've heard that it's going to be about half the cost of the Mother 32. So there's that. 
Now let's get into some cons with Mavis. I think I've talked a lot about what it can do and what I like about it. Um, let's talk about a few things that I think are missing or that could have been better. The wave folder, unfortunately, does not have a CV input. And I think that would have been really nice because, uh, you know, it's so fun to play that by hand and to hear those tones shifting. Um, you can get around that by increasing the volume going into the wave folder. It gives a similar effect. As you increase the volume, you get more of those folds. This is the wave folder dance move. But then, you know, it's just some additional patching that you have to do to make that happen. The one octave keyboard is kind of a nice to have. You can check notes without having to patch anything external up to the module. Uh, I do wish though that it had an octave switch on it. I think that would just make um, tuning a little bit faster when you know, you've know you got something in the wrong register and you want to change it and you can do that by jumping up and down octaves rather than having to uh, you know sweep the whole pitch knob. My last con is that unfortunately you can't use the wave folder and the filter separately um, because the fold input is the only input for external audio and uh, the folder goes into the filter. Would have been cool, would have been slightly more modular if they each had their own individual inputs and outputs and then you know it would be like you're adding a wave folder and a filter to your system. So I think these design choices really point towards Mavis being a flexible single voice synth. Like if you wanted to use Mavis's envelope and filter and wave folder on another sound source you totally could um, and then you'd have this free oscillator on Mavis but then you'd want to also send that through probably some other filter and envelope and, and some effects. So um, primarily I'd see the use case as Mavis being an additional complete Moog voice in your system. Um, and then there's the occasional extra utility that maybe you'd want to use on Mavis self-patched or with something else in your synth. But the voice itself feels like a contained unit. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Love to hear your thoughts in a comment and I will see you with another video real soon. I've been so far from